Hi, welcome. It's time to paint some miniatures again. And uh, we've got Nightmare Joss, also known as a name I think can be a little bit difficult for me pro to pronounce. Maybe Porhirian? Por Porhirian? Porphyrian? I don't know. Counts as Joss from the. Uh, Fallen Kingdom Nightmare box set, which is really cool. Kim here in the chat says, I think the Fallen Kingdom may be my favorite Nightmare Edition box yet. And uh, yeah, it is a strong contender for sure. It is really cool. I've got a uh, Porphyrian, Porphyrian built here, uh, counts as Jaws for the Hoffman crew, Fragmented. And I decided not to uh, glue the head slash mask on there uh, because I feel like it covers up a bit too much of the sculpt for painting. There might be an argument for leaving the arms off as well, but then you get like the issue of gluing the stuff together after you've painted skin areas that are sort of like tied together, well, sort of tied together, part of his body. So that can get messy in its own way. So I decided to do this and uh, we've got a, uh, I did a black undercoat and then some light gray over high spiridine, some black, some some light gray from the top and this is partly because like a zenithal can you can work with a zenithal to uh, make uh, the brighter areas look brighter uh, like you can paint with contrast colors or glazing and like keep these highlights or you can just use it as a guide uh, of, of where to put the highlights if you feel unsure on where the light would hit, uh, depending on where you put your imaginary source of lighting, it also makes the experience a little bit more interesting uh, for you people watching because like, uh, the complete black undercoat just looks, it can easily look like a solid black mass of, uh, dark void <laughs> like on the screen uh, but i still decided to keep this one uh entirely black uh we're gonna paint metals on there and uh one thing i did like i uh got home uh like in the middle of the night from my trip to scotland with my girlfriend and I built this miniature today and undercoated it and then I noticed that there was like this ugly gap here. So that's why <laughs> we've got some green stuff post undercoating stuff. Like I was in a bit of a hurry building and undercoating this guy. But like, yeah, it's a mistake, but it's all right. It's still curing. So we're not going to tackle painting the skin first. But if you if you come up across this little uh, hiccup, you can actually just green stuff afterwards to cover up that little gap. Sometimes, yeah, there's actually a little gap in that belt there. Maybe we should fix that too. Sometimes you notice these things after you get some brighter colors on there. And sometimes we're stressed, you know? So, like, we're going to wait a bit with the skin. We're going to focus on metals first. Spire Dan says, I kind of feel that it would be cool to do a 3D print of Solaire running as a basing, rolling as a basing element for Fallen Kingdom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, a Dark Souls reference with Solaire. Uh, like, these are the enemies, and a basing element is Solaire, like, uh, rolling to avoid an attack. That would be really cool, actually. <laughs> It's a very fun, unique idea. 
Uh, where did I have? I did have a little bit of spare green stuff here, actually. So we can fix that belt a little bit. Yeah, my plane was late yesterday. Like the trip uh, with plane from uh, Edinburgh to Gothenburg is not very long, it's about two hours. But my last four planes have all been late. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, they all been by the same company, too. Hmm. So I got home very late, but I had a great time in Scotland doing touristy things. Climbed up onto Arthur's seat. Felt like a real proper mountain climber. But mom said, like, it's more of a hill. Well, she wasn't there. She didn't climb it. Uh, yeah, okay, so I also got stilt skin here, this cute little guy, little helper, counts as mechanical attendant, so I managed to build this guy as well, really cute little fella, and uh, so damn cute, yeah. Like a tiny little bit of apparent gap filling there to do. <laughs> this is maybe not what you thought would happen immediately, but hey, whatever. Part of the process too, right? So bear with me. It was actually like Scotland is infamous for, or Britain is infamous for rain, right? But it's been really hot and dry and like it was raining yesterday the last day there and the rest of the days were really hot and quite humid and then i kind of wanted to get home and hope for it being a little bit less hot and it was but it's still super humid so <sighs> i need to remember to hydrate but enough complaining about the weather like we had a lot of sun and i'm complaining <laughs> it was awesome hi mcbluff how are you doing it's just saying i was uh i got home in the middle of the night and uh like I was a little bit stressed putting these together and undercoating them, so I missed a few gaps that were more apparent when I put the brighter part of the undercoat on. Uh, yeah, I'm doing well too. Thank you. Uh, Delving into the Nightmare Edition box. So we're going to put the head. We're going to mount it on something too. But kind of want, like, we want to be able to access this back part too. So, you know, what we could do is we could put, sometimes I glue... this stuff to like an old brush to use as a paint handle when like a cork doesn't work no i don't like i'm not at all about getting <laughs> like painting handles made for being painting handles i'm i'm just making do with whatever i have in front of me Yeah, some people have remarked on uh, this. Um, th this super glue is also pretty old now. I'm, al I'm almost out of super glue in this one. But like the little trash goblin I am, I still don't, I, I don't want to throw it away. I want to use it. So I'm just 
I've got some goofy super glue here. I'm gonna get this and flow from the thingy anymore, but just scooping it up with a sculpting tool, like a little, I don't know, gremlin scrapper. Uh, we'll get to painting any time now. Any minute. There we go. I don't know why I keep buying army painting super blue. It just always keeps getting thick towards the end. And it's not great when it comes to glue for miniatures. Okay, so yeah, so we got this strange little painting handle here, still curing a little bit. And we're gonna let it cure for just a little bit longer so that we don't put our paintbrush to the mask and then just like whip it off. Oh, I, I don't know if I finished that sentence, but like some, some people have remarked on uh, this Nightmare Edition crew being uh, quite dark, so we'll see. And uh, yeah, I kind of agree. Like, I do agree. It's really cool. And I really like Dark Souls. I'm not complaining at all. So I've got some black paint and some lead belcher. And uh, I wanted to wear a shirt to look a little bit more proper, but yeah, got this light top on because it's so bloody humid. I'll look more proper, nice next time, maybe. Uh, McBluff asks, what is your favorite model from the Fallen Kingdom box? I, uh, it's a very good question. I think I was really drawn to this one because it's got this mysterious kind of pyramid head-esque mask. Like very strange shape and uh, like there are three different faces. Like it's not pyramid head, but it's, it's strange and mysterious in the a creepy way, similar way, like what is underneath there? You don't know what it looks like. And it just feels quite brutal and grotesque. So Porf Porphyrian is certainly a strong contender. I think the Hollow Fiends are really well-designed, cool creatures. Forgot to put my phone on mute. Whoops. Uh, put glue in my arm there. I'm just gonna put down some lead belcher and this axe to start off. Lord Galeholt is really cool as well. I love a good horse. This is a beautiful horse. And uh, there we go. What's what's your favorite from the box? I know I didn't exactly give a clear answer. But I like the whole uh, helmet mask thing where you, you don't really know what's underneath. So I like how that is mirrored from the Hollow Fiends to Par Porphyrian and, uh, well, all of them actually. Like I don't, I'm not 
uh, each fan of Weeping Huntress's armor. Like, I guess she's a robot, but I don't know. She's got the whole boob armor thing going with a very slim waist, but I don't know. She's got some good movement in the skull. Um, <laughs> Still skin is cute and awful. Good pick. I like the whole nervous little helper with lots of weapons, like crouching a little, a little. It, it doesn't look from like stealth skins is po posture. It doesn't really quite look like the others are very kind to it, right? Like a very nervous goblin type. <laughs> yeah, me too. Crash gremlins. Gremlins and goblins, I love them. It's str a little strange that I don't collect gremlins by you, actually, since if I want to draw something and I don't. I don't know what to draw, or or if I feel like I am, uh, I'm feeling like a bit, you know, like oh, I don't know, I want to draw something, but I don't don't know if I can. Like I don't want any pressure of doing anything that looks awesome or great in any way. Like I'm feeling that self-criticizing pressure emotions then or if I just don't know what to draw I'll, I'll often draw a goblin I drew goblins uh, just the other day while we were at the pub in, in Scotland <laughs> it's a great activity just pint of beer and drawing goblins I like an Igor yeah Igor. I got a little story about an Igor, but I don't know if I should talk about that really. It's a bit too disgusting, maybe. <laughs> Laying down some very rough little um darker parts so we want the the axe to look quite okay oh that smell too okay didn't notice wanted to look quite uh dark like in the artwork so mixing black and lead belcher and just Painting this whole area with that to darken it a bit. And then we're gonna want to like do some cool, do a little bit of blending on these parts. If there was a labyrinth themed nightmare crew, not sure it would be the Goblin King though. Could have been a Chloe crew back in the day, I guess. Hmm. Well, Summer Team Jones, I guess. 
could probably do that. Mike Mary Summer. I'll confess I have actually never seen Labyrinth. I certainly know of it, but I never have what I've never seen it. Maybe you're yelling at me, shaking your head, shaking your fists. I don't know. Maybe you are. But I've not seen it. I'm sorry. Sounds like a neat idea, though, for a Nightmare Crew. Okay. Let's go for more black. More. I'm kind of blocking in some blacks. Uh, the metal color underneath is still wet, but that's actually a good thing because, hey, we're wet blending. Shaking boomstick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one day I will watch it for sure. Promise. Oh yeah? Did you like it? So, uh, yeah, fantasy is back with a bang now, right? Or, well, it might still be a flop. But, like, House of the Dragon and Rings of Power. <laughs> uh, say what you want, but it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out, right? Always pretty great. Nice. I know he plays the Goblin King. Uh, or I am wrong, and you can yell at me. But I think I know he plays a Goblin King. I have got a book about goblins by Brian Froud and someone else. And I think Brian Froud, Froud, Froud uh, did some work for that uh, new Labyrinth series, maybe. I might be mistaken. Yeah, like, if you got low expectations, it's nice to be proven wrong and receive something that you think is really good. Let's manage our expectations. some dark steel paint onto the mask. We don't really worry about getting steel paint onto the faces on the mask because we'll just tidy that up later. 
Yeah, I don't have the highest expectations for those series. Is six series is well, either, but like I'm, I'm just gonna try and when they're when I open mind. I still haven't watched Sandman because I I just kind of went abroad and visited my sister and did touristy stuff. Yeah, but I gotta do that. It seems to have gotten pretty popular. Any of you guys watch the Sandman show? I read some of the comics and I have also listened to the audio dramas that have been released quite recently, which I really like. Yeah. I mean, Sandman is a little strange. It doesn't have the uh, most, <laughs> doesn't really have a, uh... How should I put it? Storytelling is quite fragmented. Oh no, this fell off the stick. Oh well, let's just do this. Oh yeah, you should listen to it, it's really good. Although yeah, fragmented storytelling and it, it's a bit chaotic. But uh, some parts maybe work better than others. But it's quite experimental, which can be fun. With this glue gone bad, I don't know. Okay, so more black, more black. Hey, you guys know of like this super, super mega black color that like doesn't reflect any light at all. Were you able to, be able to buy that paint? Something that you can like use to paint miniatures with. Could be cool to paint like in, uh, I don't know. Like the dark hollow eyes of the Dead Rider, for instance. Maybe that could look like super, super dark. Spider Dines is pretty much like all game and stuff. Yeah, I didn't think American Gods, the TV series, was all that good, actually. But the Coraline film is just lovely. It's like horrible. And I kind of like Neverwhere. And Ocean at the end of the lane, I really like. Black 3. Oh, well, I don't even have Black 2.0. Yeah, I agree. It's very good. So we're now very soon gonna start working some lighter steel colors in here. I 
I'm actually organizing a little tournament in the uh, on, on the weekend on Saturday in Gothenburg. So it's gonna be fun. Little Malibu tournament one day or <laughs> yeah so uh the little so uh, the the title of the uh tournament is bad fins happen in honor of spiredine the bad fin who actually won the last one <laughs> I thought I was really clever. <laughs> Thanks, McClough. This is one of the little tournaments where I felt like, hey, I want to play more tournaments. So I guess I'll organize one myself. So I might play in it myself. Um, not going to give my... Like, I think there's this notion that organizing a term tournament, you should, should like compete yourself and you should be a TO and play a softer game. And it, like, if you get to ring, and I don't know, that doesn't have to be the case in my opinion. Sometimes when you want to play in a tournament, you just got to do it yourself. Uh, like it, it, it would feel funny to give yourself a prize being like Haha, good job if you won personally I don't think I'll I would be able to win whilst TOing at the same time I don't think my brain can help that but still want to challenge myself you know um There are a lot of different opinions on uh, tournaments, uh, etiquette, and uh, how you should do things. What do you guys think? Okay, so I'm, so I'm filling in the edges with pure silver, and then I'm going to blend in a little bit more... A mid-tone silver on the blade of the axe. So I'm, I don't mind holding the odd tournament to just like make sure my community has something to offer to lure players and make others have a good time, but like I wanna have a fun time too. So that's why I'm gonna play in it this time. I don't know, I don't wanna always do that, but I personally feel like it's reasonable. Feel free to disagree. Um, do we want the rusty axe? Yeah, let's do a rusty axe. Rust is fun. Do 
You're TOing, though. It could be smart for you to designate someone to mitigate rule disputes in your own games. Yeah, that is a very good point, for sure. Certainly. And I think it's probably important for a playing TO to be very, uh, uh, like, uh, very, very honest. Like, I'm not saying you, you're allowed to be dishonest if you're not a TO, but, like, if you're just very, very open about things, I think it should be totally fine. Like, if you're... Uh, a little bit extra helpful and uh, lighthearted and maybe transparent about your units and stuff. Like combos you might have on the way. I think you should be fine. All the rust and corrosion. Well, nobody's yelling on me to paint it very clean. <laughs> we don't see as much of the other side of the axe, so we don't really necessarily have to pay as much attention to it. Uh, see, this is sculpted as having been not very well kept. So it's got sculpted corrosion on the snakes. Painting that separately would have helped us be more meticulous in uh, painting it, but also we can just be a little lazy and uh, realize that, especially when it's got the base, you're not going to see all that much of this side of the axe. Oops, bumped into the camera there. I'm sorry about that. Hmm. So we're painting non-metallic metals, but still, like, they, sorry, we're not painting non-metallic metals was what I was trying to say. We're painting true metallics. So we're using metallic paints and, uh, they tend to look good even with minimal effort, like just base coat and wash can look pretty good as metal. But you certainly don't have to stop there and that's not where we're stopping. And as with painting true non-metallic, 
As with painting non-metallic metals. <laughs> Sorry, guys. As with painting non-metallic metals. Contrast is still key, I'd say. So the more contrast you got between the brightest and the darkest elements, the more the better the metal is gonna look. And uh, we can actually um, we can actually like use some of the same techniques as when painting non-metallic metals, although we can maybe simplify them a little bit to really push it. Spiderdine is asking, are you planning to do a very monochromatic look or will you bring color into the skin and such? Uh, I will do colors, but I think I'm going to paint them a bit darker and less colorful than I usually paint my mini shaders. So, um, not quite monochromatic, but more uh, dark and drab. That sound good to you guys? Oops. Soulful. <laughs> yeah. Dark and soulful, for sure. <laughs> We did a very touristy thing and went to a whiskey distillery. So now I kind of sort of know how whiskey is made. That's cool. I do quite like whiskey. Sounds good, says my club. Nice. All on board. They are very cool. It was very fascinating to learn of that stuff. And also strange rules as well, like Currently, you're not allowed to store whiskey barrels, like barrels of whiskey in Glasgow. So I was in Edinburgh and Glasgow, and currently there's a law after like there was a huge fire due to lots of spirits being stored in the same place. Uh, there is apparently still a law that you can't store it there. So that distillery that we visited, they have to send their casks away to age their whiskey somewhere else before it comes back. It's quite fascinating. Spiderdance says, when I lived in Japan, I visited the Suntory whiskey distillery three to four times. Nice. I do want to try more Japanese whiskey. I don't know a whole lot about whiskey, but I tend to like it. And uh, I'm aware that Japan does make a lot of whiskey. So uh, now, now I've got more respect for the whiskey golem, you know? More of an understanding. <laughs> and the construction says five feet the way Outside of Glasgow, okay. In Glasgow, absolutely not. Free tasting is the best part. I uh, wouldn't say my tasting was free, 
because I did pay for a tour, but I did certainly enjoy the tasting. We also got to taste the uh, spirits that like pre-aging. That was really nice, actually. Okay, I, th this turned into whiskey stream, apparently. <laughs> I didn't mean that to happen. Mm. Mm, 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 Okay, so a little bit black here to push the contrast. Let it be darkest, nearest the brightest parts. Push the contrast. Okay, so now let's do some brass. What are you doing, kitty cat? I'm using the Citadel Brass Scorpion. Start painting the other metal parts of the mask. Hey, kitty cat. Yeah. I'm going to give you more food later. I promise. It was so nice to see how happy she was when I got home from my trip. Happy little kitty. Yeah, how are you doing, construction pains? Spider-Man says, and <laughs> yes, my bluff. cat. Don't know if you could hear her or not. Spider-Man, at the center of the distillery tours that were free, all it cost was a train ride there. Oh, wow. That is really nice. Very nice indeed. I 
I like that uh, you might not have seen that if you don't have the miniature yourself. But on the back side of uh, Porfarian's mask, there's a wooden part where there's actually like, it's like a hatch where you can, uh, oh, should that have been steel? Maybe. You can remove the mask and it's got locks. So there are locks to hold the mask in place. Not very consensual, it seems. Porphyrian sounds Greek. Does it like, I wonder if it's a reference. I haven't really Googled that. All right, these parts are actually painted as if they're steel, maybe. Okay, look at that. Could just make some adjustments there, maybe. Under construction, resting lies between projects, between two Kickstarter commissions and City of Lies. They were starting to hurt, so taking it easy for a week before starting Kingdom Death contest. Sounds reasonable. Need to take care of your body. And uh, your eyes are no exception. Rafarian was one of the giants that the Titan guy and Tartarus spawned. Oh, okay. Thank you for the info. Yeah, it sounded very mythological. Hi, Kitty. like these oh this banding in between the heads just should it kind of be it could be brass too hmm
Okay, so there we go. All those locks. Poor, poor fire iron being locked up like this. Maybe. I don't know. Might have been an unpleasant type. Yeah, maybe. Could be, could be. Hmm. There are some cool Dark Souls models, yeah. Did you buy the did you buy this set, Spider? Didst thou purchase it? Not yet. Thinking about it, maybe. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's extra cool with um, one more nightmare set this time compared to earlier nightmare releases, which have been one box or two boxes. I wonder if this would be metal or leather. Maybe metal, maybe leather. Okay, this is not sculpted as one single metal band. Like in the artwork, it's painted as if this is metal, but the way it's sculpted, it kind of flows into the bandages. So I don't know. Well, that transition isn't very obvious. So, it's 
just bring it Hungry, a good sign when you're sick. Uh, yeah, I guess. It's not a bad sign. Hope you're better soon. Okay, so... I think we're gonna wash this with some uh, ag rags, probably. There we go. Did you have COVID, Spiredine? Hope you're well soon. fever was gone. Okay, hope you're rid of it for good now. We're gonna have to do the wash, the other side of the mask later, because otherwise drying will be a huge pain. go.
Okay. So let's add some rust. That could be fun. So first, I'm going to use a little sponge. I'm going to rip up part of a sponge and I want sections on this on the pants. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, I think. Just dab this bunch over flat area of the axe. Oh no, an even number of stripes. We can't have that. <laughs> Imbalance. In the force or something. There. Yeah, uh, I can, I can check once more to be sure. Okay, so. That stripe is quite wide. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six. Unless I can't count um, twice. Mmm, rust. I like painting rust. It's fun. Thank you. I'm glad you think so. Maybe we'll add a little bit more brighter orange for contrast.
<laughs> Looks like he's got a sizable cut piece too. Yeah, quite. Someone's gonna get tetanus from that axe. Yeah, I just, I'm I'm not sure if tetanus is like uh the biggest of your worries if this guy comes off to you with an axe, but like if it grazes you, yeah, that's probably pretty horrible. Mm, that's why it's irreducible. Nice, smart, smart, smart. You like to focus this off a little bit. Yeah, well, if it graces you, you might be dead, even if you get away, I guess. I want to go back in and <laughs> I know this is 1907, but assuredly you have some solid method of cleaning a cleaning good doctor. <laughs> Probably did sterilize it before I stabbed you with it. Might have stabbed several people before you if it was sterilized, but somewhere in the past it did sterilize. Mm. <laughs> that might be it. That might be it. Just gonna go back in and kind of reinforce that sharp edges, scratches and stuff. Some silver. Some scratches might have gone in there after the rust. Or a lot of them. Maybe even a lot of them.
Possibly, yes. Quite possibly. Okay, moving on to uh, mask face thingy. To rust that up and as well. <laughs> Wait, he invented the stapler? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess he did. <laughs> He's a genius, McMorning. He certainly is. And McMorning with stapler is like one of my, my like, one of the art, pieces of artwork I really like the most in the game. It's, just beautifully captures his um, <laughs> his insanity and his maniacal creativity and enthusiasm. I love it. I love it. He, yeah, very impressive doctor. Right, so we wanted to watch the other side of the mask. When I say wash, it's not going to get cleaner. some black up here. I love painting rusty metal. Maybe you can tell. I just think it's bloody good fun. Speaking of blood, 
could put on some blood layer too. Well, I prefer to do that post varnish. So if we want to varnish it, we should do that before that step. Okay, so let's continue working on the bras. We'll go back over the brass areas with the base color. Kind of like roughly paint that on there and uh, like almost a little textured, just poking it, poking it on there, and we're basically highlighting with our base coat, which was darkened by the wash. So that's why it becomes a highlight. Focusing on like the most prominent areas we feel would get some light. Uh, quite generous though. Um, with which areas we pick, but we avoid like any areas where the wash has hit heavily. Like any recesses and. Uh, crevices, like joints, the armor. Thanks for following Shouter, Shouter's Monster. Cool. How are you doing? We are painting a big gribbly boy from the Nightmare Edition box set Fallen Kingdoms called, and he's called mm, Por Porphyrian, was that it? Porphyrian, I hope. Bit of a giant, this guy. Counts as Joss, Joss the boss, Joss boy, Jossy boy. Everyone's favorite. Uh, can opener character. But whereas Joss has an arc axe, this guy has axe of tetanus plus four. Or something like that. The same here, being kind of quick about it, brushing over the bigger areas, leaving these parts in shadow somewhat, right? Don't have to be super neat. This is one creepy guy. Kind of look pretty creepy. Gonna do any vertigris aging on the copper? Yes, I will. My club says I <laughs> still remember my friend's character having severe rabies in Through the Reach because conditions in Through the Reach are fun. Ooh. Well, spirits have rabies in an RPG than in real life. 
if I can get really sad really quickly. Yeah, I'm thinking I'll do some verdigree. I actually have a verdigree. Uh, I usually mix up my own verdigree. You can do that with turquoise paint and glaze medium, basically. But I did actually buy some the other day, some verdigree effect from Vallejo Game Effects. So we could try that out. If you heard that, no, that's the shittiest product ever. You should never use that. Yell at the screen whilst typing to me, telling me that it is. So I know. Vallejo, Vallejo Game Color Verdigree Effect. Uh, I could have watched a review or something. Yeah, there's not going to be a bot there. I'm just going to say I could have watched a review or something. I mixed in a bit of silver into the brass paint to uh, highlight the brass. Yeah, that took me a while for for my brain to to get to that, but we got there. a bunch of stand-ups in Edinburgh because we were there. I mean, they have this festival, this extremely big, comp extremely big festival during like the whole of August in Edinburgh, Scotland, and uh, it's called the Fringe Festival. We did watch some, well, kind of two and a half really funny stand-up shows and then one stand-up show where like the last person we tried to go to we ended up in the wrong room in that pub <laughs> uh, like there were so few people in that room and when we sat down we realized we were like that's not the person we were looking to see but then we it felt too embarrassing to just stand up and leave, especially since there were only about like three or four people in there. And then we sat down. So yeah, uh, and it happened to be the worst stand up show I've ever seen. Uh, the other two were great. One was awesome. Uh, but like we couldn't leave because it felt too embarrassing. It just got worse and worse. And like I wanna just stand up. I thought I could just sit here and smile and chuckle a bit, like pretend chuckle. But it was like it was impossible. He was making it such a hard time for us to have fun, like aggressively not fun, aggressively self-loathing show kind of kind of scream for help uh I, I actually got pretty anxious seeing it because i wow but then uh, when it was over and uh, we actually caught i don't know like the last third or something of the show we wanted to see and that was awesome so a crazy contrast there is that something like that ever happened to you guys? Like, I don't want to trash talk people, but like, I don't know. It was strange. 
Very strange. I'm not going to name any names, obviously. I'm not saying I could necessarily do anything better. Don't get me wrong. But I he have been doing that for quite a long time. Usually that only happens when I visit my family. Ouch. Ouch, under construction. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, let's highlight using some silver. Let's start here. I hope, I hope there are like little rays of light as well there for the family. Family can be a handful for a lot of people, maybe for most people, I don't know. Rambling. Like usually with standard, I someone is not great, you just chuckle a little bit and then don't make a big deal of it, right? But it comes a point where it gets really stressful for you, apparently. Well, enough of that. Okay, time to highlight these faces. So if you think faces are rough to paint, here's a miniature with three. Although they were bigger and probably easier to paint than a lot of other faces in the range. So meh. it's not that bad, it's just funny. So I'm highlighting the faces with the brass color mixed with a little bit of silver. And I'm concentrating on these quite well-defined um, facial features like the cheeks, the chin, the uh, brows, nose, nostrils. Whatever this part coming down from the nose is called. And I don't mean the lip.
Uh, Larry, I should probably be AFK for a moment or two. Okay, cool, cool. No problem. So I'm going to pick out the most prominent edges of these brass details, like this sort of uh, kind of rainbow shape or whatever fan. And, uh, these sculpted scratches. You want to do the lower part of the scratch. Not both, not the upper, you want to do the lower part. So that's where the light would hit. And it's kind of tilted this way, so this would be more in shadow. We're going to darken that down a little bit later. Learning, awesome. Yeah, because when there's a scratch, the light, if coming from above, will only hit the lower part of the scratch and the upper will be in shadow. This is a stream where learning can be fun. Boop. Yeah, I don't claim to be the funniest person ever. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Welcome back. We're painting eyebrows. This guy has six. A six pack of eyebrows. Wow. Did you see the Alp Joss? He is so strong. He even has a six pack of eyebrows. Wow. Wow, 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 wow.
And on the back side, you might want to, like, if you're not, I mean, we put this in a paint handle of sorts, <laughs> and it fell off. So now we're just rolling the paint, and you risk rubbing it off, especially since we humans tend to have a bit of grease on our hands, even if we haven't been eating crisps. Our uh, fingertips can be a little greasy, so paint can rub off. And to prevent that, you can actually wear uh, like thin layer latex gloves, which can be especially handy if you're airbrushing. If you just don't want to have paint on your fingers, maybe you or your skin reacts badly to it. I'm being Captain Obvious now, but Captain Obvious needs to rear her head sometimes, I guess. Uh. Mm. So a little bit of black, some dark brown, and some bronze color, and we're darkening this area down. can actually add some purple. Purple washes are really good on bronze and brass, actually. For, it can work for gold, too. Creates a very, very nice contrast. So if you want to wash like a bronze metallic, don't know what to use. You could uh, like a, a brown wash, but you could also just try purple. Spider-Man says, Captain Obvious has to be really content with his job since he hasn't gotten a promotion in at least 40 years. Oh. Yeah, maybe. Poor Captain Obvious. He's obvious, but he's actually a captain. So we should treat him where he's back. Um, so there's a green glow from the eyes and mouths of these faces in the artwork. And I'm thinking we'll go get back to that later. 
certainly be cool to do. Um, we've got a pretty rich um, brass and rusty steel going here, right? So you can do some really cool things with true metallics. So shall we try this uh, Verdigri effect? Uh, game effects, way cool. Let's hopefully not ruin this stuff. <laughs> you can do it carefully. So rust, any type of corrosion, it just it tends to collect in certain places. Yell at me if I'm still being Captain Obvious. But it tends to collect in uh, nooks and crannies and like where water would pile or run. And where it would be difficult to To um, clean. Spider says metallics are probably my weakest paint skill at the moment. They can be hard. Uh, I think I'm. I think I often have an easier time with dirty metallics than super shiny, high elf type stuff, if you know what I mean. I also think it's more fun, so that might have something to do with it. So this is sort of like a wash, like a rust effect wash, which is nice. You can also, of course, use pigments, which work a little differently. And I haven't used them all a whole lot, but a little bit. I use pigments on the rusty cogs of the mechanical puppet grinder base. Painting with true metallics can actually be frustrating because they can be kind of messy paints. So that can make the experience less enjoyable, I find. Like, I really don't have anything against non-metallic metals. I think that's fun and challenging and really cool. But I really like like, I don't mind being one of those people who, who paint true metallics. I think it's really, they both have their place. So you want to put some wash at the rivets, because if the metal is rusty, it's always going to be Pretty much always going to be rusty around the rivets. And like, um, probably rain would go down the mask and collect and run here in these nooks. Uh, and therefore, and they're probably the hardest to clean, especially if you can't really see properly and you have this sort of pyramid head thingy on. 
Okay, so this is brass. This is steel, steel. But we also have these little brass lines here. So we can still put some verdigris around those. Paradigm says, do you know one of the main differences with verdigree and rustless forms of corrosion? I do know one of them. One is that verdigree is turquoise and the other is generally orange. But yeah, uh, there might be something I'm not thinking of uh, something or something I really never knew. So please enlighten me. As far as I know, verdigree tends to occur on like bronze and copper. Something it has to do with minerals and stuff. Or like the chemical composition. Blah 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 blah. Hmm. I think this is a balancing act because I still kind of want the warmth of copper show. But I want a cool verdigree effect too. Oh, third degree is protective. Uh, that does make sense now, to, now that I think about it, because third degree, like copper roofs and stuff. Yeah, cool. I learned something. Thank you. That is very interesting. So I was thinking we'll let this cure and uh, well dry and I'll have a short break and then I'll be back to you. Yeah, play weird educational stream. Like school, but weird. That looks pretty cool. I think this product is a fine one. Nice. Ah, oh, this is a cool guy. Okay, so short break. See you in few minutes.
Okay, I'm back. back. Woo. 
You've been hunting. Wow. What have you been hunting? Coworkers. Um. Sounds like a scary experience for the coworkers. Oh, all out on lunch. Oh, well, I kind of like this verdigree effect, but I think maybe I'm going to put a little bit more bronze back in there and just a few places. <laughs> Spire down, are you reinforcing that stereotypical Finnish fascination with knives? Okay, so I think we're gonna paint um, the bandages. <laughs> if you say so, oh, come on, let go. Please let go. When I use the brush, that works. <laughs> so we're gonna put some dried bark and uh, some steel agent rod on the plate. And I'm going to base coat most of this with Steel Legion Drab. I will later separate the metallic banding here uh, and the bandages with like a dark line. That'll look better. helps define the different areas and materials. Using dried mark in the shadows. Might as well blend it in. Whipped cream in a cam. You, yeah, you deserve some whipped cream, right? Speaking of whipped cream, what is my hair doing? I don't know. It's got its own life.
Let's pretend it looks cool. And if anyone's worried, yes, I did feed the kitty cat. Sounds messy, yes. Can be. And let's go into Rakar Flash. Oh, this pot is almost finished. But, you know, I guess we could just go into Polished Bone. We can just mix. Or it didn't. Pretty sure I have another rock earth here. Yeah, I do. Oh, it's not it's crazy. There we go. We found it. You helped a lot. That's what I'm saying. We. Oh no, this is a. Rock our flesh pot that is a bit weird in that it's somehow not quite the same color as the other one. Well, maybe we shall use this one after all. We're highlighting these bandages, trying to avoid getting paint in the recesses between the different wraps of bandage. Working up to almost polished bone. This character is not too different from painting, say, Killjoy. 
and that there's a big muscular body parts <laughs> and uh, bandages, huge rusty cleaver. But this guy's got a strange mask and some fancy pants. So it's also a little bit different. So as you might have suspected, we're not going to be able to finish this on this stream. Will we finish him next stream? Maybe. Um, it's going to be at least two streams. Could try and finish him next stream, but it could be a challenge. want to do him justice. Okay, that's nice to hear. So now I'm highlighting it with pure reaper polished bone. We could stain these bandages with some grime and blood layer if we wanna.
like I'm not I'm not letting these lines be um, like these final highlight lines be complete lines. Like I want to interrupt them and do like these little stagger lines kind of to make the bandage look rugged and worn. Poor guy wasn't bandaged today, so it's what I'm thinking, at least. Bandages wouldn't be shiny, so they'll be matte, so they wouldn't have the highest contrast, but we can afford to do a little bit of almost white highlights, I think, towards these most obvious edges. Now let's paint the wrapping of the axe. And uh, I think we paint it watered down like mix up black and dried bark. And then we'll get some free highlights. And that's Xenophil. And then the trousers. Let's do, I want to do, yeah, let's do them uh, like Spider-Man wanted striped trousers. So I'm thinking we'll do half of them like a drab burgundy color.
And the other half may be black. Does that sound good? Or do we... Or do we actually... Yeah, let's do that. So I grab my partner burgundy, but adding a little bit of black to dull it down. We want to slightly muted color scheme. Nor I normally paint quite quite vibrant, although like not the most colorful thing ever. Like a bit in between, I'd say. And this color goes really well with that bandage, almost creamy bandage color. Well, it's dirtier than cream, but you know what I mean. Dirty cream color. Um, and uh, Right, almost forgot about the pants actually. Transfers are sticking up above the belt, of course. And let's shade that a bit. I'm seeing all the black paint. Looking for these stripes sculpted into miniature, suggesting creases in the fabric.
So we use that as a guideline. Um, doing the lacing thing where I just work that over the card piece and then wiped it off with my thumb, which inevitably leaves our shadow color in the hard to reach areas. So I'm very lazy, <laughs> but sometimes functional way to uh, shade something. <laughs> Do that same thing here, actually. Why not show lazy tricks? Especially since it's supposed to be a little dirty. There we go. Could just water it down and use it as a wash. This is a messier method. Just don't put that thumb in a different place in the miniature, uh, getting paint where you don't want it. Because that is not fun at all. Then let's add some po Reaper Polish Bone to that previous burgundy mix and I like the, I like these edges, the cloth. Again, we can interrupt these lines at times to make it look like these are fancy clothes that are now worn and therefore a little bit less fancy. I think I might have just put paint in my hair. That could be a feature.
see. So just some creasing where fabric meets the knee. And stay in camera. It's easiest to drift outside of camera a little bit. Oh, such a fancy guy. I wonder if we had a shirt earlier. Just hoped out of it. Next leg. I wonder what character we're going to paint after this guy. Maybe the main guy himself, Lord Galehalt. Oh, the hurt. Yes. Or maybe Stiltskin. Stiltskin is a charming little guy. Maybe. What do you guys think? Maybe it's a little early. I mean, we aren't going to finish this guy this stream, so. You never know. We might be able to finish this guy next stream. Let's see.
and just one even brighter edge highlight, I think. In some places at least. Maybe the stitching. This guy fell on his butt sometime. Seems like I'm going to paint the belt in Rhinox Hide. And uh, I think we're going to make it look pretty dark, I guess. It kind of depends on how we want to deal with the path, maybe. Maybe I want the terraces to be like the other stripes to be black. So we want the belt to be a little bit more 
Oops. Stand out just a little bit more from that. But let's shade the bell like do a black line towards the top, leaving some brown above it and even more brown below. Then let's highlight that with some monochrome brown mixed with a little bit of khaki and a little bit of rhinos hide actually to like want to get a slightly warmer somewhat warm highlight but not the warmest ever so we still want it to like kind of drab. Find some sort of balance. Um, adding just a tiny bit of warmth. Yes, as our amazing hobby assistant Kim says, we are going to be wrapping up soon. And uh, we got quite far at least. We painted the steel and brass areas. We painted a lot of rust effects. And we painted the bandages on his right arm the burgundy stripes on the trousers and like most of the leather belt. So next time, I'm thinking we'll finish up the wrapping on the ax, the other stripes of the trousers and work on the skin and we'll see how far we get. Yeah, those are my social infos. So check that stuff out if you haven't yet. It's been great being back here painting miniatures with you guys. Remember to check out the other streamers. And I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. So, uh, in the meantime, take care and have fun and stay weird and all that stuff. Bye-bye.